Hey guys, this is Computer Techie, and today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Canon EOS Rebel T2i DSLR camera. Inside the Canon Rebel T2i package, you have your body uh, that is the actual camera itself and uh, has a detachable cap that you can take off to put on the lens. Uh, you have your Canon EFS 18 to 55 millimeter image stabilizer lens that you can adjust like so. You have your battery charger, which is right here, and you have the cord that you use to hook up the battery charger. You also have uh, these two manuals uh, for the Canon Rebel T2i 550D. The green one is in English, and the orange one is in Spanish. Uh, for the camera itself, it includes a battery pack, an e, or LP E8 battery pack. Uh, you have your data transfer cable, which, uh, can, which can connect to a USB 2.0 port in your computer. You have what is called EOS, Rebel, or EOS Digital Solution Disk, which is basically your software for the Canon. It's not really necessary, but... Uh, some people like it because it can organize the photos easier. And then you have your software instruction manual. And finally, you have your Canon EOS Digital Neck Strap that you can use. Uh, you can hook these ends up to these two metal clamps right there and right there. If you're looking for professional photography for an affordable price, this is the perfect camera for you. This camera shoots pictures at a resolution of 18 megapixels and has an ISO range up to 6400 from 100 to 6400 and is expandable to 12800. On the top of the camera you have your mode dial which has all your photo and video settings. You have automatic depth of field, manual exposure, aperture priority, shutter priority, Program, Creative Auto, Full Auto, Flash Off, Portrait, Landscape, Close Up, Sports, and Night Portrait. And then at the very end you have your video option. To install the battery pack, simply pull down this lever on the bottom of your camera. And then you'll have this open place where you can set it in. Inside uh, you should be able to see a few lines on this end of it and then just simply match up this part of the battery to it and then install it like so and then you can close the hatch on one side of the camera you have your card slot where you simply pull it open and then lift up the door and then you can take out your card like that be sure whenever you're buying a card that you buy a class 6 or up uh, card if you're going to shoot video because it's really not mentioned anywhere that you need to get class 6 or up, but if you want to shoot HD video, you have to get class 6 or up because it has to do with the processing speed of the video, and if you don't get class 6 or up, it will not be able to film like HD video for more than maybe about 10 seconds. On the other side of the camera, you have uh, a bunch of ports. Uh, you have your mic port where if you don't like the microphone in the camera you can always uh, attach an external mic up here um, you have this one I think it's another mic port I'm not exactly sure down here you have your data transfer cable port and at the bottom you have your HDMI port so if you have an HDMI cord and an HDTV you can just hook it up to your television and look at your video on TV which is very cool. If you're going to attach your lens, it's very simple to do. On this side, you should see a crescent-shaped button. Simply press it in and then turn uh, your cap counterclockwise, and then it'll sh it should pop off like that. Then you want to take your lens, take off this cap on the bottom, where you should see this. On this, on this part of the lens, you should see a little white square and you should also see a white square right here on the metallic rim 
all you have to do is then line them up, make sure it's fit in correctly, and then type or then turn it clockwise, and then it should be attached like that. If you take off that cap, there you go, you have your lens attached. On the lens itself, you should have two switches. One switch says stabilizer on and off, and then you have another switch that says AFMF. What that means is AF sets you on autofocus mode, so if you were to take photo, uh, you would press this button down halfway and then it would automatically focus it to the subject you're taking a picture of. But if it won't, if you don't like it uh, the set that way, you want to turn it to MF, which is manual focus. And this top rim you can use to manually focus your photo. Be sure you do not turn this if you have it in AF mode, otherwise it might break it, so you can make sure you only turn this if you have it in manual focus mode. Also with your stabilizer on and off, that means that if you're taking a picture and your hand happens to be moving a little bit, if you have the stabilizer on it won't be blurry, but if you have it off it might be a little bit blurry. So you always want to make sure it's on if you want to take a clear photo. Turning on the camera itself is very simple. You should see an on off switch, simply turn it to on. And then you should see this, uh, this screen of stuff. Um, with DSLR cameras, they don't show you what the photo is going to look like on this screen itself. You have to look into this lens thing. I'm not sure if you can see it that well. But it, there are uh, nine little points inside that help you line up the photo. And if you press the button, you can see all these numbers on the bottom. That shows you... Uh, information that I really don't know what it means but I'm probably gonna learn how to figure it out soon uh, if you notice down uh, up by the the eye uh, the lens looking through thing I'm not sure what it's called they have two rectangular sensors and every time your eye gets close to these sensors this screen automatically shuts off it's pretty much a power saver but it doesn't matter what you put in front of the sensors it could be your finger it could be your eye anything and it will automatically shut off the uh, the screen. One of the cool features it has is that it does do continuous shooting. Down here on the bottom you should see a bunch of frames followed by other frames. If you click your left arrow on the arrow pad you should have this continuous shooting option, single shooting, and then you have your self timer, self timer by two seconds, and then this one is a timer where you can set it to how long it's gonna last. It, it's It can shoot up to it's 10 photos, but it has a self-timer too, so it'll give you enough time to get ready, and then it will take 10 continuous photos. This top arrow allows you to adjust your white balance. If you click it, you should see white balance, auto, daylight, shade, cloudy, tungsten light, white fluorescent light, flash, and custom. You can also adjust the picture style uh, without having to edit the mode dial, or the mode wheel whatever it's called, by uh, clicking this bottom arrow where you have standard, portrait, landscape, neutral, faithful, monochrome, user def1 standard, user def2 standard, and user def3 standard. On the screen where you see one shot, that means that it's in your autofocus mode. So if you click on the right arrow, you can adjust how it does your autofocus. You can do one shot AI focus and AI servo, but uh, change it to one shot. If you change it to your manual focus, it will say MF. And then if you click your right arrow, you'll have, well, it, ha it says the same thing, but in this case, you're doing manual focus. If you want to adjust your ISO range, simply go to the top of your camera and then click the ISO button. Then you should be given this amount, this uh, list of ISO speeds. You have auto, which automatically adjusts your ISO speed. 100, 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and 6400. And remember, this camera is expandable up to 12,800. Now on to my favorite part, the movie mode. Let me change it to movie mode real quick. Uh, whenever you set it into movie mode, as you can see, it then changes uh, everything you see on the screen to what is being captured by your lens. 
Uh, the cool thing about this camera, it does shoot in many different resolutions and at different frames per second. If you click on menu up here, you can change that. At the top where it says movie recording size, you have 1920 by 1080, which is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio, which also shoots, and this uh, setting shoots at 30 frames per second. You also have 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second. What's unique about 24 frames per second is that that's pretty much the common uh, frames per second speed of most television shows, and probably some movies, and it has a, a very cool professional movie quality look. You also have 1280 by 720 which shoots at about 60 frames per second and the more frames per second you have shooting the better slow-mo videos you can get so you can have a really neat HD widescreen slow-mo video if you set it on this setting. You also have 640 by 480 which is your common 4 to 3 aspect ratio and this also shoots at 60 frames per second. Finally, you have crop 640 by 480. So basically, what you could do is you could um, we you could record a 640 by 480 video, and then you can use this option to crop it so you can zoom in a little bit into the video once you've recorded it. So say for example, you were recording a car, you could select this option so you could just only see the car instead of the entire setting that the car is driving in. And Recording videos is actually quite simple. Up near uh, your eye hole, you should see a little uh, button that has a camera on it, and next to it is a small red dot. This is your video recording button. You don't want to press this button right here, otherwise it'll take a picture. But actually, you can take a picture while you're recording video. It just might make your video stop up a little bit. Uh, so all you have to do is click it. Um, that, that does that occasionally if you don't have it doing anything. So all you have to do is turn it off and put it back on. Okay, so I'm going to click the record button. And then as you can see, up on the top right-hand corner, you should see a little red uh, dot. That's your recording sim symbol, but probably most of you already knew that. At the moment, it's recording 1920 by 1080 video at about 30 frames per second. You can uh, adjust your zoom lens so you can zoom in. Um, and if you have it on manual focus mode, you can always do manual focus video, which is very, uh, very cool about video capturing is that you actually can manually focus while you do it. If you want to manually turn on your flash, which is basically the thing that pops up right here, simply press this button right here that has a lightning bolt on it, and then it should pop up. Here you go, you have your flash up here. And if this flash isn't enough for you, you can always buy an external flash and install it right here. Um, there, there are hundreds of them available from Canon, which is uh, very cool. Overall, I would definitely recommend this camera to you. It is It takes incredible photos and fantastic HD video. Uh, if you buy it from Canon, it's around... $7.99 or $8.99 depending on whether they have a sale or not but I actually bought mine from Best Buy for about $7.99 and if you're interested in buying an SD card I highly recommend um, the 16 uh, gigabyte class 10 from PNY like actually while I was filming this video a few minutes ago it actually came in the mail so uh, the SD card you saw earlier in the video is not the one I'm going to use anymore, but you need class 6 or up. Class 10 is probably what I would prefer. And this SD card you can buy for about $45. And if you notice on Amazon.com, they have this and they also have the SanDisk 16GB class 10. And if you notice, the SanDisk costs about $99. This is only $45. The difference is it says 20 megabytes per second and the other one is 30. And it just shoots, um, it just has a faster processing rate, but really, if you're interested in taking video, 20 megabytes per second is not going to, like, really affect your video. It's really about the class 10, and trust me, 20 megabytes per second is plenty fast enough for taking photos. I hope you guys liked watching this video. Hopefully this can help you decide which camera you're interested in buying. I highly recommend buying this one, and, uh... Once again, if you're down in Australia or some other countries, it, it's called the Canon EOS 550D. Um, if you uh, like this video, feel free to leave me a comment or send me a message. I'll try to reply as soon as I can. Thanks.